Former Lurker here. Today we're going to learn how to set up Octolapse from scratch after a fresh install. Uh, this requires Octolapse version 0.3.4 RC1 Dev 2 or greater. So if you don't see the Dev or you don't see the RC, it's also a higher version and, and you'll be good to go. Um, so let's assume that we just installed Octolapse and we've just clicked here on the tab and we see the Octolapse tab and you'll notice some icons in red that look like trouble and all it's trying to tell you is that there's no printer selected. So for right now I'm going to assume that your printer's in this list and I'm going to choose the Prusa MK2 MK2S multi-material. If your printer's not on this list uh, there'll be a future video where we're going to explore creating a printer profile for a printer that is not currently supported by the defaults. So I'll pick the Prusa MK2S multi-material and you'll notice that we have a new error. It basically is telling us that we haven't configured this printer. Uh, the default profiles have some things pre-filled in to make it a little easier to set, to set up your printer, but your recent slicer settings, your current slicer settings are needed in order to make Octolapse really work and have uh, high quality prints at the same time. So let's edit the profile. We'll click on this button. And the first thing to do is to pick your slicer type. For the Prusa uh, printers, uh, Prusa Slicer Prusa Edition is the default. If we were using Cura, we could pick that. And you'll notice how the settings change a little bit when I choose another slicer. The reason for this is I try to make it as easy as possible to actually copy in the settings into your current slicer. Uh, to use the same metric or the same uh, units and to have everything grouped to make it easy to find. Uh, but right now we're going to use just slicers so we'll pick that and if you use one of these other slicers the uh, the steps are pretty similar. So we'll see that we can find this first group of settings in printer settings, extruder and retraction. So let's go ahead and look at our slicer and if I pick printer settings, uh, extruder, and then look at retraction. I'll see all those settings listed here. So I'm going to switch screens again and we'll move these settings over here to make it a little bit easier to see. There we go. Alright, so uh, the length is set to 4. That's the retraction length and we'll see that's already 4 over here. Uh, the Z-Lift is 0 0.6 millimeters, and that matches as well. The retraction speeds match, and the detraction speeds match. If these don't match, copy in what you have over into Octolapse. And then we can move to the next area, which is the speed for print moves. And we can find that under printer settings, speed, and speed for print moves. So printer settings, speed, and then speed for print moves. And we'll see all of these settings here. So let's just go ahead and enter them in. We have 50 millimeters a second for perimeters. We have 25 millimeters a second for small, 40 for external, 60 for infill. Solid infill is 50. Top solid infill is 40. Uh, support is at 50. Bridging is at 20 millimeters a second. And gap fill is at 40 millimeters a second. So those are all entered. And in the next section, we have speed, speed for non-print moves. Um, if I look here, speed for non-print moves, there's only one item. It's at 180 millimeters a second, and it matches, so there's no reason to copy them. And I do notice now that I need to change that to match the travel speed. It should say travel speed. It might say travel speed in your version. Um, the next section, modifiers, you can find these in print settings, speed and modifiers. So uh, modifiers is here. First layer speed is 30 millimeters a second. So I just type 30 in there. And you'll also notice that on some of these, uh, it says that you can enter a percent, which is no problem. I, if I entered 30 percent in here, what that means is uh, Slicer Prusa Edition is going to multiply this number by the feature speed up here to determine how fast these items should all print on the first layer. If we just enter 30, that means that they'll all print at 30 millimeters a second, uh, which which is pretty good. And it doesn't matter which one you use, Octolapse will will still be able to to determine the features. 
Uh, and what are these print features we're talking about? Well, if you have a warning message here that says that some of your speeds aren't unique, what it means is some of these features are printing at the same speed, and some of Octolapse's settings require for these, or at least they perform best, when they're all unique. And it turns out it's pretty easy to make sure that all of the speeds are unique. So let's take a look at that now while we're copying our uh, our settings over from our slicer. So we see that external perimeters, top solid infill, and gaps are all printing at 2400 millimeters a minute. And this is the speed you'd see if you'd look in your G-code file. Um, so that means we have to change two of the three of these to make them all unique. So let's look at top solid infill and gaps. So for top solid infill, let's increase it by 0.1 millimeters a second. And for gaps, let's decrease it by 0.1 millimeters per second. So 3.9, 0.9. And now we have to copy these over into Slicer so that our Slicer makes a G code with the same speed. So we find top solid infill, 40.1. Uh, gaps should be 39.9. And that gets rid of that error message entirely. And we have one other section. Uh, we've got the traction, perimeters, solid infill, and supports. That'll all be printed at 3,000 millimeters a minute. So we need to change these three. Uh, perimeters, I'm going to change it just slightly right here to 50.1. And solid infill. And you'll notice when I click away off this box that perimeters has already gone away as a, as a duplicate because now it's at a unique speed. For solid infill, let's go up to 50.2. And then for supports, let's go down to 49.9. We can copy these right over. 50.1, excuse me, 50.2, and what was the other one we changed? Supports, 49.9. Now all of our settings match, and you'll notice that error or that warning went away. We have all unique speeds, and that should be all you have to change. There's some other settings down here that maybe we want to look at, uh, but the defaults that are in here are pretty good, and I don't think we'll need to mess with those. So we'll click Save, and you'll see all the errors go away, and at this point we could try a test print. So if I were to print right away, if there are any errors detected, uh, some problems with the defaults that aren't showing right now, uh, you'll get a warning message. So I'm just going to try to print this and we'll see what happens. Okay, it says unable to start the time lapse. An unknown exception occurred while testing the default webcam camera profile. Okay, so that is the default webcam camera profile. Let's get in there and see what the problem is. I can actually test this webcam just by hitting this test button and you see that it comes back failed internal server error. Now the reason for this is I don't have a webcam at this address right now so it's trying to query to get an image from this address and there's no address there's no camera there so the internal server error is probably a file not found or something uh, but I do have a webcam it's just at a different location I'm going to type it in here And that's the full URL. If I click test, oh, now it works because there's actually a webcam there. If I can save it, the camera works. Uh, you may want to write when you think everything is set up correctly, change this debug profile to test mode. Now what test mode does is it'll send G code to the printer, but it'll strip any extrusion. It'll strip any commands to heat up the printer bed or the extruder. It'll strip out fan commands and several others. Uh, actually, firmware retract and detract, it strips those out. Uh, so test mode's a nice quick way to test your printer. I would recommend still unloading your filament because there's always the possibility that there's some bug in this test mode or that it's not compatible with your printer, especially if you have to add your printer to the profiles. That means that probably not as many people are using it and it hasn't been as well tested. So we're going to do a test mode print now with the same file and we click print and it looks to have started uh, just fine. Now you'll notice that this icon may be orange if you're following along here and all that means is um, 
Octolaps hasn't read enough G code in order to know whether or not the print's going to work. If you see a red symbol or if this stays orange after your first layer is printed, you may want to stop the print. Uh, you'll also notice that it's taking a tremendous amount of snapshots, and that's really uh, because I'm running this on a test instance, so there's not even an actual printer connected. I'm using the virtual printer. Uh, let's cancel and, and kind of see what happens next. So I'm going to assume that I didn't cancel it and that the print just finished. All right, we get a little message telling us how many frames were captured and that it started rendering, and this will disappear on its own. And you'll see a little icon here that indicates that it's generating a time lapse. And when the time lapse is ready, you'll be notified. Um, in general, the time lapses are available in the time lapse tab. So I can see this print is right here, and you'll see a lot of failures. This is just me canceling it and running tests. Um, I don't. I do have failures, but not this many in a row. Anyway, I can download my time lapse here, and I can play it, and we can see how it turned out. All right, I think that's the basics of installing it and copying in your slicer settings and and picking, uh, making your slicer settings unique. And now I'd like to look at one final interesting feature that was just added. Uh, it's pretty well known that Octolaps, depending on how it's configured, can leave some artifacts on the outside of your print. Uh, it's dependent on the slicer and what trigger you use and, and your retraction settings, sure. Uh, but it's Im pretty much impossible without manually putting in uh, G-code to take snapshots, which you can do, by the way, in the G-code trigger, to eliminate those external blemishes entirely until now. There's a new trigger and it's the layer change high quality trigger. If I pick that, um, let's take a look and see what's different about it. If you scroll down a bit, you'll see a little section called feature detection. There's a lot of help available. There's Wicca entries that you can look and read all about how to set this up and what it does. But long story short, Octolaps will only print when feature detection is enabled over the enabled features. So you'll notice here that retraction and detraction are not enabled, but perimeters is, as is infill, solid infill, and a few others. And the reason behind this is uh, if Octolaps tries to take a picture while it's printing, let's say, external perimeters or small perimeters, which in Slicer PE can actually be external perimeters, it could leave a blemish. So what we want to do is prevent Octolaps from taking pictures over those spots, and that's exactly what feature detection does. Uh, this is also why we were trying to get unique speeds earlier. If several of these features are printing at the same speed, Octolaps doesn't know what's what. And it, if any of those features is enabled, it'll take a, a snapshot at that, at that moment. Uh, and it could circumvent this high-quality uh, snapshot profile entirely. So let's get out of that and if we print we can see what's going on by enabling this uh, position changes info panel and you can see right here what it thinks is going on, what parts being printed and you'll notice that there are some unknown features that, that have popped up and that's because I didn't slice this file that's printing using those settings that we entered into the printer profile. So it's very important that your slicer settings in your printer profile match the file that you're printing. Uh, in the future, I hope to add a function to extract the settings from the G-code, but we're not quite there yet. Uh, it'll take some time and uh, quite a bit of effort and some testing to get that working, and eventually it will. But for now, if you want the highest quality print and you want the best quality time lapse, make sure that your slicer settings in here match exactly what the file that you're printing and that you're using the high quality uh, layer change trigger. Alright, thanks a lot and um, we'll see some more videos coming up soon with some more tutorials. I hope to show how to how to take time lapses with multiple cameras um, and also how to use a DSLR or a script camera and maybe in the future even some advanced topics like triggering cameras with G GPIO pins. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye-bye.